So what you gonna do, brother? We about to run wild with a style like no other. So somebody call Brodus Clay mother and tell her Richard runs on the men like Ed Lover. And Doc Dre, what Scott say, what they hang on every word like it's something that the Rock say. No JR, but they talking wrestling. We bring the noise with the boys, so we don't like castling. So masculine, who's in machismo? Mutton chop shop, Gran Turismo. No free throws, snout hoops and heels. It's D-Ross retirement, give me the super feels. Straight shoot, it's real. Drop a pipe bomb, get rid of the bull like the rock's right arm. So stay calm, tranquilo. I'll go Naito and give him destino. And we know that you chumps ain't ready for the heartbreak runs and the Cuban Genetti. They drop a heavy tag team it like Teddy. Long go strong with the heat like Eddie. So steady, like when Taker walk the tight rope. Spaz like Taz with the mic and a tight choke. Dirtiest player in the game with the eye poke. 1988 Macho Man on a line of coke. These other cats are a waste, they boring. Illegitimate sons like Jason Jordan. And Richard runs never give him respect. Unless they going on air with a broken freaking neck. So bounce like Papa Pump's pecs. Every time they get down, they bound to catch wreck. Y'all don't know nada. They the Okadas. You're the Washington Generals. They the Globetrotters. A whole lot of podcasts in the scene. But Richard runs running wild. It's the cast of your dreams. So it seems these two is too sweet. Bullet club pulling up with schemes to delete. So retreat. We steal. We cheat. But I never lie. I swear on these beats. And these two got some styles for you. But what you gonna do when they run wild on you? Oh, hell yeah. It's the big dog, Red Tires. And you're listening to the Running Wild Podcast. Because if you're trying to run wild, this is the place to do it. Do you want to let everyone know that you get it? Do you not want to be a Melvin? Well, then listen to the Running Wild Podcast. And if you don't, you know what you are. I'm the last real man, Silas Young. And if you're any kind of man, you'll be listening to the Running Wild Podcast. Hey guys, this is Mandy Leon, and you're listening to the Running Wild Podcast. This is Sam Adonis, El Hudo de las Chicas, the CMLL, and you are listening to the Running Wild Podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Running Wild Podcast. I'm your co-host, Rich. Alongside me, as always, my co-host, Runs. Yes, sir. Uh, it's shockingly the second take, because legitimately, <laughs> when we started the show, I forgot how I do the intro every week. Um, anyway, uh, just a remind uh, reminder that you guys can catch us on iTunes and SignCloud, and we're brought to you in partnership with PWPonderings.com, LastWordOnProWrestling.com, and ROHWorld.com. We're also featured on the Wrestling to the Max network. Uh, we got First of all, Merry Christmas to all celebrating, uh, as you guys, this episode comes out just before Christmas. Whoa, whoa. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. All right, all right. We're going to be PC. Yeah, I'm not. PC. Whatever. Uh, PC principal. We have a big uh, episode this week. So we have an interview with Sam Adonis, who a CMLL star, who is going to be taking on Negro Casas in a hair versus hair match on New Year's Day. And we're going to be going over Clash of Champions. We have some major updates from WWE. Uh, in term, inside and outside the ring. So let's get right to it. I guess if we're going to do chronologically, what did you think of Clash of Champions? Uh, I, th- I thought it was pretty solid. I, I enjoyed most of it. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed the tag match. I enjoyed the title match. They they gave them everything a lot of time. And, you know, I thought it was a solid show. Yeah, I mean, it, it felt like a really great episode of SmackDown. But... I wasn't. Uh, it didn't feel very pay per view y to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being picky. Here you go. This I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this. If the main event was a little better, uh, it, it would have helped. But I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Final Battle. I, I, I enjoyed the wrestling on, on the show. I, I thought I enjoyed the, the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn stuff with Daniel Bryan and Shane. I, I thought that was well done. I, I enjoyed the match. Uh, you know, I. I don't know. I, I overall, I really enjoyed the show. The the four way tag was awesome. The tag was really good. I enjoy, that was that stood out to me is probably for me the best match on the on the show. I actually liked, even though we were tweeting before or the show started, and I was like, "Great, starting off the show hot with the uh, U.S. title," but I actually ended up liking it, and I was uh, pretty surprised that Dolph won and. I mean, just because I don't think there's a lot to nitpick from Raw and SmackDown, what did you think about Ziggler coming out and dropping the title the way he did? I thought it was really cool. You know, I'm I'm kicking myself because when I saw, um, like, on the 
preview for SmackDown, it said, uh, like, Dolph Ziggler celebration. And in my head, I said, why would he, like, it's not going to be a celebration. Like, he's not, he, he's angry right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, why would he come out and celebrate? Like, maybe this is a throw down the title type of moment. And I didn't say anything. And then, you know, he came out, he, he started talking, and that's exactly what he did. Like, you want someone to remember me by? Here you go. Um, so uh, with, with his contract status and everything, who really knows, um, which is, is a perfect thing for them to play off, you know, but if in my mind, if he's leaving, right. Or if he didn't just sign a contract extension or something of that nature, then he does not beat Bobby Roode and Baron Corbin. You, you know what I mean? This, this storyline doesn't happen if he's actually leaving in my mind. Yeah, there's no way. I don't. There's no. You have him take the pin, make the champion. Right. You know, m- make He's just done. Yeah, and then you know, even if you wanted Rude to win, then you have Corbin can complain that he didn't get pinned. Right. right? This and you know he, he's working house shows. He's just not on SmackDown to to sell that storyline. So it, it would seem that maybe he works him for a while. Maybe he takes a little break, but. You know, it would seem like this is part of the bigger picture for him and, and hopefully a revival. You know, Dolph is someone that, you know, uh, suffice it to say, I, I've i literally been a fan of Dolph Ziggler since he walked around shaking people's hand backstage. For whatever reason, I, I liked him then and I never stopped. So it, it's it's enjoyable. You know, I, I like this character. I'm interested to see where it goes. It's something different for him. So, you know, I, I'm more excited now to, to see where this goes because this is not something that happens really ever. Uh, so they're going to do a, a U.S. tournament. Is he going to come back? And, you know, they're going to have a U.S. versus U.S. match for like Undisputed. Maybe it's a ladder match. I don't know. There, there's plenty of ways they can go with this, and, and I'm intrigued. No, yeah. I mean, I think it's crazy because in a – what, in a uh... – in a world or a time period where entrances are so flashy and so kind of crazy, the idea that he just walks out to no music is just fantastic. Right. I, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed this whole storyline of him just saying, like, you guys, you guys don't care. And, and you know, that, like, that's true. And, and it just, it, it's so perfect for him. And he's such a good heel. You know, it works. Yeah, no, it's it's overall, it, it's really, I think the best thing that SmackDown's doing right now. I agree, um, you know, to an extent, because I love what they're doing with, with the Yet movement and Dan O'Brien and that whole thing. I'm really interested to see what they do with that, because I'm 99% sure that Dan O'Brien's not wrestling, and I 1,000% sure that I don't want to see him wrestle. So I, they're building to something with him and Shane, right? Is it just going to be a power struggle or, or, or what? Um, you know, uh, uh, on Sunday, if anyone didn't see it, there was some altercations with, with him and, and Shane. And uh, Shane blatantly cheated trying to stop Kevin Holmes and Sami Zayn from getting the win. Uh, so then Dan O'Brien quick counted to to make things right. And, you know, like for Dan O'Brien, who's the clean cut, super cookie cutter baby face to do something like that. Yes, he's doing it for the right reason, but it's still something the announcers and Owens and Zane and whoever can point at and, you know, use uh, on the heel tactic. So they have, you know, what are they doing on Raw? Because on SmackDown, that's at least two storylines that I'm really in- interested in. And AJ Styles is, pardon the pun, phenomenal. So anything that guy's doing, I'm intrigued. So, you know, that's three things SmackDown has going for them. And I honestly couldn't tell you one thing on Raw that I'm super interested in. Yeah, I mean, I will say that I'm I'm probably not the only person to say it, but it's just considering the amount of talent that is signed to WWE, the fact that Shane McMahon is at the center of one of their biggest storylines, it just kind of, it just rubs me the but wrong it, way. It's no, working. That, it's done right. But, but that's, still. that's that's nonsense because it's, 
the power struggle. It, it's the same thing as always. It, it's not like Shane McMahon is fighting for the world championship and involved in the main storyline. He's he's the the power that's feuding with the talent, you know? Yeah. So like I, I don't I don't I don't look at it as he's yes, he's having the main issue with Owens and Zayn, but like he's not fighting them at the moment you know that hopefully that's over with for a little while yeah as long as it's over then i'm okay but if it just leads to more shane mcmahon matches i'm just yeah i yeah, mean I'm what's gonna, nakamura I see doing a tag or something well okay so this this is something that um we we have to talk about because with the rumble um about a month away uh, i if if shinsuke nakamura Wins the okay. Let's say he wins a couple matches from now till the Rumble, right? He just he has some some good showings on SmackDown, no problem. Then maybe he comes in early. He wins the Royal Rumble. I, I think he's rehabbed. If he wins the Rumble, and they build to him and AJ going to Mania, he goes to Mania, beats AJ, has the huge pop, awesome match, Mania moment. I think he's fine. I think he's made. You know, I don't necessarily think that they've destroyed him yet yes they haven't used him correctly or anywhere near you know to to his talent but i i don't think he's a lost cause he's so good and people still love him they love the song they love everything about it that they'll be perfectly happy perfectly fine with you know him winning the rumble him winning the title no problem it'll be a huge moment and we'll go from there with it all right I just I won't lie to you I can I can no longer look at the Royal Rumble as an event that the person that I think should win the Rumble should win because I I just in the last I'm trying to think 10 years look you and I were there when we were going to Rumble and we were like this is going to be great John Cena is not going to win this Royal Rumble and that son of a bitch came out and ruined my night. Uh, Roman Reigns has won the last three Rumbles. Am I crazy? Yeah, definitely not the last three. Last two, though. Mm, maybe. I mean, this is kind of absurd that I don't even know this right now. But anyway. Are you kidding me? I was trying to think, like, I was literally just trying to think who won, like, this morning, and I had no idea. It's like, what the hell was the main event of WrestleMania last year? Couldn't even tell you. Yeah, then I'm having a hard time right now. Uh, so just, just let's see. The oh wait a minute, Randy Orton won last year. What? Wait a minute, Roman. This is I'm so confused. Roman Reigns won in 2015. Triple H won in 2016. Right, eliminating Roman, right, or eliminating Ambrose at the end. And then Randy Orton won last year. Randy fucking Orton won the Who Royal the Rumble. Who did he face at WrestleMania? I don't. He didn't face Brock, right? Because that was SummerSlam. Um, I will tell you that Randy Orton. Um, oh, Bray Wyatt won the championship at Elimination oh. Chamber. Wow! My God! Wow! Nope, never would have got that one. No. And then Orton, as, you, as, and then, as we heard, that was never even a thought. Wow. God. Was that the, the bug match? Yes. Yes, it was. <sighs> WrestleMania feels like a, a long time ago. Here's the thing. I think, I think this is a product of two people who work in education. And if you work in education, the only way to really work <laughs> in education is to forget – most Everything. of what happens, because if not, you wouldn't walk through those doors again in September. If you remembered everything, you that happened wouldn't here walk before. through those doors again on a Tuesday. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But definitely, if you made it to the end of the year, you'd be like, "All right, yeah, that's it. Yeah, done. Never again." Yeah, couple, made it one. I'm good. Couple, like I'm gonna walk in. Look, right now, I'm so happy to be away from work. On January 2nd, I'm going to walk in with a spring in my step. Like, it's so nice to be back in the school building because yeah. over the next oh, ten days, this I'm gonna is forget. what it's like. Yeah, yeah, and then like twenty minutes in, it'll, oh, right. Especially since go. my my coworker made a terrible mistake of buying me a uh, two Nerf guns. Uh, so let's just say that uh, t- today was a little hectic at school for some teachers, 
may have just had uh, nerf darts flying into their classroom. That's right. All right. Well, uh, yeah. back to wrestling, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can see what you're saying about the Rumble, considering Triple H and Randy Orton have won the last two years, and it's, as we just proved, been kind of meaningless. Um, but it's the Rumble, and it's always awesome. It's always great. Um, I just love that match, no matter, you know, if it lives up to the expectations or not, the the expectations alone uh, are just, just, you know, excite me and, and get me so ready to see that match and and what they do with it, how they book it, all that. So, you know, the the fun thing about this year is we'll we'll be able to talk about two of them. Um, As on Raw, the only good thing or big news or any of that um, was the angle at the end where the women were brawling and Stephanie came out, uh, gave a whole awesome speech, and then said that there will be a women's rumble this year. And what I thought was like, you know, super awesome. And it's something that we always think is cool, but nobody in that ring knew. Um, yeah. And that was, that was really awesome. Like to see all their reactions and then to read everyone's comments and all that on Twitter. Like these women are so excited and they're so ready. And like, this is so much, this is so well-deserved, you know, this is, this is going to be fun. It's going to be cool to talk about. It's going to be cool to think about. Um, it's going to be cool to watch. Yeah, I was uh, listening to uh, Cheap Heat. They were talking about, will it be Top Rope Elimination? Yeah, why not? Well, they, they've like never had a Top Rope Elimination, even Battle Royal. Like The women always go, it's second Correct. rope. Have they ever had a Royal Rumble? No. I mean, their yeah. argument was like the height might make it difficult to take the bump over the top. They do it all the time. Well, they were talking about the clothesline. Do they do clotheslines over there? I'm just, yeah, you're probably right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They're, these women are athletes. Like, they'll be okay. Uh, you know what I mean? This is, <laughs> not to sound like uh, all the PC and everything, but like, if the men can do it, the women can, you know what I mean? Like, there's, these women are so good. They're so talented. They're so athletic. Uh, I think they'll be all right. Runs the river over here. I just, I just, I just picture I mean, you, you can't do a mid rope like you know what I mean. What are you going to do a mid rope clothesline? That would be so stupid. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna cop, uh, superimpose your face onto Rosie the River's uh, the poster for Thanks. this week's episode. <laughs> that would be anyway, just amazing. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, some people have argued, like, you know, you don't want to have two Rumbles on one show, that it ruins the specialness of it. I don't care. I could watch... I could watch a thousand... I mean, I could watch... Then then make another one. Make a, a 205 Live it's Rumble. Not, I don't it's care. Not, it's not like they're having a Raw and SmackDown Rumble. Then I'm completely with you. But I would still love watching two Rumbles. I'm with you on that, too. But then, then it's overkill, right? If there's 30 guys and 30 guys, it's... But if there's 20 women and there's 30 guys or whatever it is, it grows to 30 women, that's fine. But uh, I think I heard 20 for this year. But it, that's that's a perfect start, you know, and it, it'll be something different because it's the women and we've never seen this. Um, so, you know, just just knowing that, like, the girls like Bailey or Sasha or uh, Naya, who, whoever, have grown up watching this match, loving this match, wanting to be a part of it, and now – you know, have their own chance to make that statement in history. Uh, you know, it's just going to be enjoyable to to watch that. You know, for the moments. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited. I wonder if we get a Kofi. Does uh, one of the girls does a, a Kofi moment? I'd, I'd love to see. Like, I was, I was thinking about that. Like, who's going to walk on her hands or, or something like that? You know. Um, but the other thing that um, I'm excited about, which is a really cool and very different thing is the legends. Um, you have a Beth Phoenix and Alita and a Trish or a Molly or whoever, you know, that you can bring back for this and give them that like, Hey, thanks. You, you help bring this here. And I think that's going to be really cool too, because we've never had that, you know, we've never been able to have the, the great women come back and participate in a match like this and go for a title shot and, have all that fun stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely going to be special. I'm looking forward to it. 
uh, maybe maybe we uh, maybe we get to watch Royal Rumble uh, in, the, in the same building. It'll be it'll be uh, might be could be maybe the second the second Rumble edition makes uh, makes this happen. <laughs> second Rumble edition. Oh, and, speaking of of that, go ahead. Well, I was going to say uh, I was actually going to bring up uh, the two hundred five live tour uh, for a second. Well, be, before we we move on to that, um, you want to just give our quick pre final four thoughts for for the women's Rumble? Oh yeah. You know? So uh, go ahead. You want to you want to start with one? You want to give all four? What do you want to do? Uh, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'll start with one. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal. I think I think Ronda Rousey's in it. That'd be interesting if that's. Does she win it then? All right, whatever. We'll we'll figure that out. But that's fine. So Rousey is the final four. Okay. Um, I guess uh, somewhat along those lines, maybe a little bit. I'm I'm gonna say Beth Phoenix is one of the final four. Holy shit! Uh, you know she was she was in the Royal Rumble, like the actual Royal Rumble, got an elimination. Right? She eliminated Great Khali. Um, I think this is like a match where she needs to come back and and participate. Um, so, and then she's such a beast that I think having her in that final four would, would be pretty cool. Similar to, uh, if you remember 2000, 2001, where Mr. Perfect was yeah. like in there in the final four and that was cool, you know? So, uh, um, I'm with that. So I was actually thinking of someone else, but in the same kind of vein, Ivory. They're, as they're, a final four, she's being reported as you know going into the Hall of Fame this year. Okay, all right, okay. So I mean, I think she could probably still go enough to be in a Rumble, and then you know, I think she'd be. I, I'm not sure if. See, I don't think. I'm not sure if Beth Phoenix is in it. So for me, it's Ivory. That's the one that I. I think she's definitely going to be in it. I I just don't see them. I just I don't see Beth Phoenix not being in this, like because of everything that I said with her and the Rumble. You know, um, she's Edge's wife. Um, he is the man, you know, yeah. um, one, one of the big time players in that company. So just as a credit to him and as a credit to everything she did, um, you know, I, I just think it makes so much sense for her. Maybe not the final four or whatever the case, but uh, I, she's got to be in this rumble. Let's see. Then I'm going to go. Uh, so with... you said, all right, so you went Rousey Ivory. I'll go Beth. And I'm going to say Paige. Paige, all right, that's her um, house. With with a legitimate shot of of Paige winning this thing. I'll go with. It's tough, Oscar. Okay. I think I, and I, I think she could win it. Feel like yes, I, I feel like I'm I'm gonna include her in there. Actually, just because you said her, I, I won't at this time. But uh, I think. You know, I think there's going to be someone from Raw and SmackDown in there, right, in the Final Four. Like, that would make sense to me. Um, so I'm going to go Beth, Paige. I, I don't know who to put in there from, from SmackDown. Uh, I, Naomi, I guess? Yeah, I could see Naomi. You um, know, maybe she has that cool Kofi spot towards the end and stays in to eliminate someone and, you know. I'm trying to think. And... I'll give you my next one, and maybe it'll help you out. My right. my last one, um, my last one. So I got a legend, I got a raw, I got a SmackDown. I don't know if you can see where I'm going, but I'm going Ember Moon. Hmm. Uh, you know, have her show up on the main roster, uh, whatever. You know, she doesn't have to stay. She's in the Rumble, NXT Women's Champ, right? That makes sense, and she's going for it. And you know, maybe that um, brings Asuka back into the equation, right? Uh, because they have some history there, so I can see that easily. But you know, um, I, I could also see everyone ganging up on Asuka and, and getting her out of there. So it'll be, you know, it's going to be fun, man. Well, I'm going to go crazy for my last pick. Very literally crazy. Because no, I, no, I think it's somebody who I think the the final four is actually going to round out one person that you know is not going to win. And I think it's going to be Alicia Fox. Santina Morella. My God. I don't even he know what should, I, I mean, do. like, he should be in it, you know, just because that would be amazing. But, like, I feel like so many people would be like, of course a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So let's not do that now. But 
Down the happen. line, if he's down for it, that would be amazing. He'd be so good. Man, he you know, be him and Beth now. in there, oh, that would be fantastic. I heard uh, Rosenberg was talking about how he had uh, Daniel Bryan on the show, and after the interview they were just talking, and he, he was saying, you know, how having Kali was so good because he was like such a like a joke spot after a while, you know, and that mm-hmm. that's something like, I mean, Raw is three hours of, of there are no jokes. There's no, there's no, like, SmackDown has yeah. uh, no, Brizango or you know, Randy, you, right. you know? Uh, right. So they get to mix it up. Uh, you don't have that at all. Uh, we, you know. It's a good point. So, I mean, it's kind of weird to think about that. You also have Kane in the main event for no reason, so. I mean, yeah, I guess that, that's kind of funny. That doesn't help anyone. Um, well, we could talk about Ambrose, right? He um, got written off TV with an elbow injury. Um, which apparently was a torn or partially torn tricep. Uh, so I'm not sure how long he'll be out. He had like an hour-long surgery. Uh, so I'm sure he'll be out a little bit. Uh, hopefully back in time for Mania. I'm, I'm really not sure about that. You know, I, I obviously feel bad for any guy who gets injured, but I also feel that in some weird way... Like... Yes. It gets to a point where right. an injury is a good thing. You, you get off yeah. TV for a while. You know, I mean, people have discussed this in the past. I mean, it's almost like it almost should be like guys have a 10 month schedule that's staggered. Like mm-hmm. all these dudes go from like, I mean, I don't know. It just I, it sounds ridiculous. But just if you had them on like a 10 month schedule where some guys were February to whatever. And you know, I can't do math. But you just did that stuff. You'd you'd always get these returns that that felt that felt like they freshened things up. Ambrose being away, yeah. I, I wonder. I wonder um, how stale that would become. You know, oh, this guy's coming back now. Yeah, great. And we just saw another guy come back. You know. Yeah. All right. Man, the guys yeah, would I, love that though. Go ahead, yeah. Imagine. Oh, it would make so much sense. It would be great for everyone's health and, and all that sort of thing, but. You know, I'm I'm all for some some type of lighter schedule or, or something to keep these guys healthier. But like, look it's at Ring a of shame Honor. that we're not going to get to see that. Yeah, well, that's that's. I was talking to somebody earlier today, and you know, they asked me about the young bucks and never coming. And I was just saying, like, I don't know. They work a lot less. They make plenty of money. Why would they? You know, unless they get bored and run out of things to do. And that's the only really way I can see them getting off the Indies and going somewhere else. But until that happens, why would they? You know, work more days, see your family less, probably make less money and have a lot less fun. Now. I can't see that. I mean, the Ring of Honor guys, you know, they they love working for the company. But you, I'm telling you, like, the day after Final Battle, a lot of them were just like, I mean, the day after the tapings were like, done for Ring of, you know, with Ring of Honor for the year. Like, woo! I mean, a lot of them... You know, if you're not like Ring of Honor's next show is the 20th of January, I think. Yeah. So they legit get like six weeks of you know yeah. if they choose. I mean, some of them go, are go work somewhere else. Yeah, but yeah. you know exactly. They're not traveling every day. They're yeah, maybe they're going somewhere for the weekend. Maybe they're going somewhere for five days or two weeks. Whatever it is, it's you know it's a lot lighter. It's a lot less stressful. They're not answering to anybody. They're going out there doing what they want to do, put it on their best match. And, you know, that that's what it's about. So hopefully some way, one way or another, they uh, figure that out. But until then, I'm, I'm not sure. <sighs> I, I, I don't think I don't think that's going to work out now. But, yeah, no, Ambrose, yeah, I think it'll um, be – go ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, I was just going to say, like, uh, on top of what you were saying, I completely agree that this is a good thing for Ambrose, you know, he didn't look happy like with Rollins that it happened. Um, so maybe he comes back in his shield stuff. They have a match and he turns on him and hopefully then he gets out of jeans and goes with just, you know, crazy Ambrose from NXT and or Moxley from from beforehand. So hopefully we get a, a crazy heel Ambrose since we've never had that, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, I know. I could see him coming back as a heel. Maybe he comes back and attacks someone right away. I think. I mean, he's right, going to be Rollins cheered. Rollins would be yeah. the guy, right? Yeah, like stop him from winning a title or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, 
I could see Rollins getting a shot at the titles, him coming back to be his partner, turning on him after, or something like that. So, yeah, we're we're in the same boat. This could be a good thing. Hopefully, they use it to their advantage and come back with a with a change. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I'd, I'd really like to see that. I'm trying to think of what else stood out to me from the shows this week. Obviously, I'm not very excited about Kane and and uh, Kane versus Brock and um, and Braun Strowman. Did you? Oh, did you see Braun Strowman? Does Kane Elf? just get pinned? Is there any point? No, I did not. You didn't. WWE. dot com did this whole thing where they like recreated scenes from the movie Elf and and Braun Strowman is Elf. And one of my favorites is the part where. Uh, you know, Will Ferrell in the movie c- breaks into the his father's job while he's interviewing who ends up being Tyrion Lannister, right? He's like the writer that they want to get to write the book. And he makes, you know, makes elf jokes and he runs at him. Uh, he runs at Will Ferrell on the table and it's kind of hilarious and beats the crap out of him. Well, Drew Gulak played the Tyrion Lannister character and got on the table and ran at him, but then, like, Bronn gets angry and he stops. And But, like, Bronn kept doing... I mean, he was he was all into it. I mean, you know, they had little twists on it, but it was it was pretty funny. Some people were, like, up in arms that he shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff and it takes <clears throat> away from him. And Okay. It, people, wrestling <laughs> is not real. Like, get the fuck over it. Uh, these guys are playing a character. Have you, like, Braun Strowman is a funny guy. Like, I, I've heard him on a couple on, uh, like, the Talk is Jericho podcast and just other interviews. Like, he's he's a normal person. He has interests. He does things. He's not Braun Strowman. You know what I mean? He, he's not a giant freak. Ray Wyatt doesn't live in the woods. Like, it, it, you, you got to give these guys some, some credit. Let them put on some entertaining things and step outside the box a little bit, man. Like, loosen up. Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, it, I think that's what people are also... What I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, but the idea that when you're watching a show, like if you have like a comedy match or like a, just a different style match that you may not love, you, you also have to think of it as a show. And you just can't have... Like I say, a, a Ring of Honor pay per view because I know they usually have eight <laughs> matches. You can't just have eight killer matches in a row because Ring by of the Honor time evolve, like you said with yeah. Raw, there's no comedy, there's no break, there's no entertainment other than wrestling. Yeah, no, you can't do that. You have to. That's why the the you know people were going crazy about the Bucks doing the drop kick spot and flipping out about that. Um, Jim Cornette was like shitting all over it. They had a UFC guy, I think it was. Daniel Cormier, maybe? I don't know. No, maybe not him. But somebody basically from UFC tweeted it out. It was like, you know, this is what grown men watch, whatever. And everyone went crazy. And it was just like, that was the match before the main event. Right. You can't and, and have like, a crazy high spot match and then have the right. main event not, you know, live up to that. I agree with that. And I mean, like, the the same people who are complaining about Braun Strowman stepping out of character, or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet my life. Love the elite, right? Like, there's no oh, question yeah. about that. And look at Marty Scurll. Look at the Young Bucks. Look at Kenny Omega, the most serious wrestler of the last year, right? One of the best, the best, whatever that people want to say. On the elite or on Ringo, the dude dressed like Jasmine on a New Japan show and wrestled. Uh, th- you know, get over it. Th- these guys are entertainers. They're putting on a show. Let them have some fun. It doesn't take away when they want to get serious. Yes, if Braun Strowman comes out dancing like uh, Brodus Clay, then eventually that affects you. But if he's doing a little comedy thing uh, to make people laugh on WWE.com, it's really not that serious. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I feel like wrestlers would do ridiculous... All right, let's think back to the times that WWE, and I think WCW too, but I feel like WWE for sure, was on Family Feud. Okay. Weren't they just on Family Feud? Like, wasn't Braun Strowman on Family Feud? 
Uh, or the Wyatt family. Like, I'm so upset that I that I would that I missed that. If it, if if it not just like, happened, not like last week, but, but I, I think like uh, last year or the year before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But I mean, like when Repo Man was on it or mm-hmm, something like that, mm-hmm. like back in the day, like those things were ridiculous. And as you watched it, like you knew how ridiculous it was, you know. Right, and man. they were kayfabe. You, laugh, you enjoy but still, it. You had a guy named. Yeah. I mean, granted, this... nobody liked him, but the goon. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. look, one of the people's favorite wrestlers in the entire world, who took himself seriously, also called himself the Hitman. He was not a hitman. Right. Never and once in his match, career did he even get paid to injure somebody. Yeah, you never know. But like that that's that's what I'm saying, you know, like this this whole thing like <laughs> again, wrestling is not real. It it is entertainment. It's a show. It, it, it's a play. It, it's whatever you want to call it, but like to get upset that <laughs> these guys are not the person that they play on TV 24 seven, that's crazy. And I get it. It's a WWE related thing. So like yeah. he's breaking character, but like, come on, man, <laughs> you can't expect. Uh, I just, I don't know what people expect anymore. I really don't. And it was funny. I mean, I, I, I liked right. it. So, I mean, that's, that's the other part. Um, and it's not like Braun Strowman hasn't done anything like, um, I wouldn't say unintentionally, but like sarcastically funny yeah, or, totally. you know, like he's, he says clever things on TV or things that make people laugh at the expense of someone else. Like, so I, I, he's not like, he's not the type of like Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, you know, Wyatt family darkness yeah. anymore. He He's much, much more than that. And, I'm glad to see him showing some personality and doing some more things. That that's great for him. Speaking of uh, Rowan and Harper, I just want to be clear: Statwife continues to be, generally speaking, WWE's favorite fan. They came out, and she did not know who they were. She couldn't recognize them for some reason. She that's was like, great. "Who are these guys?" And I was like, "It's." Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, they were in the Wyatt family. She's like, oh, those guys. Oh, they look different. I was like, that's amazing. Perfect. Great job by WWE because mission accomplished. Right? That's that's exactly what they needed. That's exactly what they wanted. And clearly that's what they were going for. Um, I don't know how to feel about this whole thing. Like, it's, I really, really, really like Luke Harper. Eric Rowan. Not so much, so that really hurts. But I understand, like WWE's kind of just like, hey, these guys were cool together. Let's keep trying to make this work when we have nothing else or we have no other plans for Harper. So uh, it is what it is, you know. Hopefully, they can make this thing work. I, I don't, I don't know. What do you think of this? It's fine. I mean, it's two large guys. They kind of belong together. There's but so like many the, guys with the that's... hammers and stuff. And look, the truth like, is that's that... a little too cartoonish. Hey, here's the thing. First of all, not everybody is going to win the world title. Well, one hundred percent agree. And I don't think that Luke Harper should be world champion. No. However, the bladder match and feud that he had with Dolph over the IC title was amazing. Oh no, that and... was really good. <laughs> I agree. Right. So what what I'm what I'm going for, I guess, is I'd like to see some some progression for Luke Harper other than just every time we don't have anything for him, let's throw him back with Rowan. You know, maybe he pairs up with someone else. Uh, I know Killian Dane is, is doing sanity, but like say he wasn't, you know, Harper and, and Dane as the Bludgeon Brothers. Something like that would make me care more just because it wasn't Rowan, you know. Like, I feel like Rowan yeah. is dead weight at this point. Like, clearly, they have no plans for him. They they have no singles, anything for him, right? Like, every time they broke up, he's taken a back seat, whether he's gotten hurt, whether he's not and just gone away. Um, you know, he's always been the odd man out of that group. So when they're together, it, it's just like, oh, okay, Rowan again. So, you know, that's my only downfall. But I'm glad to see something different. I'm glad to see an opportunity for them and – you know, hopefully it works. We, we we can use tag teams. So. Oh, well, you know, we could always use tag teams. They just got to make sure that they actually 
use them the use right them. way. I mean, right. but that's whatever. Uh, anything else from the shows that you want to uh, cover? I don't believe so. What do you think about so WWN? Uh, that's the uh, the you know umbrella promotion for for Evolve. They announced that there's going to be WWN Club, which is their streaming service. So for nine ninety nine, you can get all of their back content, which is going to include Dragon Gate stuff, all the Evolve shows, and then it's going to also include, I believe, Shimmer. Is it Shimmer and Shine? I'm sorry. Shine, yeah, definitely. Those, not Shimmer. Those are probably not Shimmer. I think Shimmer is it's on Shine. high spots yeah, or whatever. It's Shine, but yeah. uh, Viva La Lucha, FIP. Yeah, it's all the stuff. It's all the stuff that, that they've been streaming for the past couple of years or, mm-hmm. or however long. You know, it's their umbrella of stuff, the FIPs and all of that. And I, I is that worth $10 a month? I, I really, really don't know. Like, e- Evolve is running, what, two shows in four months? Yeah. Or four shows in four months, whatever it is, with a two-month break in between. So... Like, I'm going to pay an extra $20 for what in that time? And, you know, during those months where they don't have shows or things of that nature, what am I paying for? I'm paying, yes, I know, on demand. So maybe I'll use this like like I use High Spots. Like, every now and then I'll subscribe, I'll watch as many shows as I want, and that'll be it. But I'm really not sure I want to watch those old Dragon Gate shows. Like... I know who's on them. I knew about them back in the day. And, you know, now guys like Chuck Taylor and Gargano and Air Fox and whoever else that were on those shows are in a higher standing. But I can't say that I care to watch them. So I really don't know. Yeah, I mean, so the, the, also the way they're doing it is they're offering you a discount per pay-per-view. You know, so I mean, okay. If you were to, if you bought Shine also, which is like once monthly, and Evolve has two shows per month, that's normally forty five dollars. So you get like a fifty percent uh, discount. Yeah. The only and then apparently after two weeks, the on demand version will go up. Uh, but I think actually the it'll go to the entire thing two weeks later. Uh, you know, so what I like is that they're doing a, they are doing a free subscription for January. So, okay. you know, I kind of want to see how it goes also, because if you remember at first, Flow Slam had problems with some of the streaming, you know, and I wonder how much that was possibly on, on WWN's side. So I want to see how it works out. I don't know, because WWN was, was fine. Yeah, true, streaming you're right. Uh, up until Flow Slam, right? Like. The shows that we used to watch uh, on just WWN were, were always fine, and uh, the past two that, that were on were also fine. So hopefully, you know, they're okay. Maybe there's not as much traffic because it's just the WWN Live, and I, I don't know how Flow Slam and everything was all set up. So, you know, that was something that uh, we kind of saw the writing on the wall from the beginning, mm-hmm. um, that it just it wasn't going to be what it was advertised as or so whatever monetary and stuff like that that went on behind the scenes, well, we don't, we are not privy to. But um, from buying it, yeah, I think the first day that it was released and having the hope of even a beyond, you know, I knew PWG wasn't getting on there. I knew there was a slim chance Ring yeah. of Honor wasn't getting on there, but a beyond uh, a Chikara any of those smaller indie promotions that are popular, I would have been so much more behind Flow Slam on. But they didn't step outside of the WWN box, and they didn't go, or they couldn't go and get anyone else. And it was kind of just really not good. You know, it was a waste. Uh, I think you're 100% right. So I... I'm kind of excited. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to give the I'm definitely going to give the WN club a try, you know, but I I I'm not I'm not going to do I'm glad that there's not a thing like Flow Slam where it's like, you know, we'll get it for the year and it's this much. I do wish I think and this is something that I think is a problem for for every single company that wants to do something like this. 
WWE offers so much more for nine ninety nine. Right, and the bigger product, the bigger names. So does New Japan. Um, the exact same thing. Yeah. So it's it's real, and 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 with New Japan, you don't have to pay extra for the for the pay per views, right? It's like included. Right. Everything is included. All of their house shows, all of everything is on there um, for nine ninety nine or eight ninety nine, whatever mm-hmm. the hell it is. And you know, New Japan, uh, they go a couple months without a big pay per view, right? So. You, you can say, oh, but how come you're not complaining about that? When I watch uh, Wrestle Kingdom or when I watch uh, Destruction or whatever main pay-per-view that I've waited two, three, four months to see, I feel like I'm getting 50 to to $100 worth of value. So I really don't care that I've been paying for two months w- without anything going on. You know, those shows are so awesome and so big that it, they're worth paying the $40 or 39 or whatever the hell Ring of Honor charges, you know, to, to see them. So I, I'm fine with that. I, I I haven't seen the same from Evolve and WWN lately. And, you know, while I love Evolve and a lot, most of the guys on that roster, it, it's, you know, after seeing it all so much, and like we were talking about earlier, there's not really storylines and any storylines that are going are really slow burns and really long term drawn out things. And, you know, seeing Matt Riddle versus catch point or seeing those kind of things continuing, you, you get, you get bored of them, you know? Yeah. I mean, I do like the little bit of an evolution here with, with uh, Riddle's character you know, kind of saying he's not just the bro, which he did do himself, but you know, he's he's not just the bro anymore. So I think that's great. I like what they're doing with uh, Dickinson in terms of like, you know, he got suspended and he's kind of running again. He, he's unhinged. So, so are you paying fifty dollars to go to the next show? It all depends, sir. To be honest with you, I have made I haven't made a final decision about which day I'm going to see them because I'm thinking uh, you know WWN or Evolve Gabe Sapolsky are offering the creative seminar in Brooklyn right. so if I go to the Brooklyn show if I go to that seminar I'm not going to go to Friday show Friday yeah. like, whatever the day before whatever, you, you get what yeah. I'm saying so so that that all depends I am not going to lie to you though like I'm kind of if I don't go to the seminar I, I do. I am thinking about going to Laboom. I just miss Laboom. Want to go? Yeah, I I completely agree on, on that. I just you know they're they're very expensive for a, a company that hasn't done much for me lately, other than kind of just live off that Cruiserweight Classic or the WWE name or relationship or whatever the case. I. Yes, they they're trying to this whole new influx of young talent and that sort of thing, but like I feel like there's plenty of young talent out there already that kind of have a name that they could use as well. You know, someone like uh Chuck Taylor who I, I've seen him say publicly that Sapolsky just stopped booking him. Uh, I, that's something I don't get. Like that guy was awesome in his role in Evolve. He's really talented really a, a funny guy when when he plays that comedy character which he wasn't doing in evolve which he could have at any point um you know and to just stop using him and that's someone that that i would actually pay to go see right now uh you know uh, watching him in pwg the last couple months and seeing him blow up over there and now new japan and ring of honor etc cetera, etc cetera. It, it seems like such a weird and stupid move <sighs> I mean, I'm I'm just as selfishly I'm just kind of psyched to see him in Ring of Honor right now doing his thing. Uh, definitely not really doing the comedy as much, but I think that's kind of. I mean, he does. They do the him and Trent do like the Trent does the slingshot, then like does the what is that called a face? You know where yeah. he puts his, you know I, I forget yeah. what you call that, and then they they call it two. Ah, oh, it's two something. A two amigo? I don't know. Something something like that. They call it two something. And then he hits the super slow senton. Like that thing yeah. is ridiculous. And uh I even He's I got so it. entertaining, man. Ring Both of Honor this week, honestly, you I know you didn't watch it yet. 
Go watch it. It's go him. watch NXT. Yo, all right, I will. I will. We are. Listen to I'm me right I'm, now. I'll bet you any amount of money NXT was better. Yo, you have a 10-day window right now? You have a 10-day window where I'll probably watch anything you tell me to watch. Incorrect. But, all right. All right? But, it, no, honestly. NXT was extreme, like, really good this week, so. What, what did I miss? Um, it was Fish and O'Reilly winning the tag titles. Um, it was Bait versus Dunn again. Um, something else happened in the middle. I can't recall. Oh, oh it there was goes. Roddy and Sullivan. Lars. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at it. It, it. it was it was really a good episode, and you know I, I've seen some people saying it was the best episode of NXT TV ever, which it, like to wow. me is like wow because NXT has been on for a while and it's been really good. So. Yeah, you know, that, that said something to me, and that made me go out of my way to, to check it out, and I didn't disagree. I'll tell you, uh, on on the Ring of Honor side, this is a post-pay-per-view show, which I normally don't like. They had a storyline where Coast to Coast... This was from before the pay-per-view, or this was after? This was... The, so this was taped before, but right, that's, shown that's after. I mean. Yeah, no, but yeah, shown okay. after. And it See, was... Like, so you're, okay, so... You're already digging a hole right there with me. Well, okay, I know. You, you know that. But listen, right. Rocky so go Romero, ahead, go ahead. Yes. Rocky go ahead, Romero Trent Beretta, and Chucky e. T versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks right. for the six-man titles in the main event. Also, you had this coast-to-coast loses, and they say... I literally think I just saw that on New Japan, but anyway. Coast-to-coast loses, they say that they... Uh, they're going to disband the, if they lose their next match. Ooh, boy. They finally got on the mic. Like I was like, oh my god, they gave them mic time. And uh, there are some spoilers, but we can. I don't think we don't need to discuss them now. But actually, you know what? Uh, spoilers, because whatever. It because it's news. War Machines was at the tapings and the night after final battle, and they said goodbye to the Ring of Honor crowd. Interesting. So. It seems like that might, you know, they were down in Philly. It seems like that literally might be their last appearance in Ring of Honor. I mean, I don't know. I don't think they say that if they're going to be in New Japan more. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think I think if you're in New Japan, Ring of Honor, like basically they work it, they work it, they work it out, right? I mean, other than so, WWE, like, is that? I don't know, man. I mean, it it seems like it could be a, a real possibility. All right, where else do they um, go? I mean, unless they're going exclusive to New Japan, but I don't. I just don't well, see I that just happening. Googled, I googled um, War Machine WWE. Yeah. And the first thing that popped up was from the Mira in the UK, and it says Independent Wrestling Sensations Ricochet and War Machine set to sign with WWE. So, uh, yeah. Ooh. So that should be really interesting. I mean, man, this company is getting so many guys. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Ricochet was a, a, a literally a matter of time since he signed that deal with Future Underground. You know, like that was a joke. Like he, he's that guy is amazing, and he deserves to be on WWE and getting all the credit for everything he does. Um, so I can't wait to see that. I don't care if he's just on 205 Live. Like, he's amazing. He'll he'll make a name for himself. He'll figure something out. Um, so, whatever. Uh, yeah, War Machine, I think, uh, how long ago did I ask you the question of how long before they were in WWE? Because it felt like they did everything they needed to do um, on the Indies. They're two huge guys. Um, authors of pain got to be on their way up to, to the main roster. Maybe War Machine shows up on the main roster right away, but you know, I could see them running uh, in NXT and having some cool matches. Sanity, Undisputed Era, um, maybe even the Authors of Pain, and, and then we move on. My god, I'm just thinking about the Undisputed Era versus War Machine <laughs> in NXT. <laughs> My god, what is happening? Yeah, man. It's a wild world right now. Johnny Gargano, Roddy Strong, Chris Hero, Undisputed Era. Like, just, yeah. I mean, you know what? Maybe we should just become a NXT 205 live show 
and just not watch the main roster anymore? Uh, no, but it's a good thought. I don't know, man. I like Jack Gallagher. Jack Gallagher. I love the way he uh, dresses. So I, I can't wait for once Rockstar Rockstar Spud shows up. I'll I'll be a little intrigued to watch. I, I'm for some reason I, I really like that guy, and I'm excited to see uh, what he does there. I know, I know you are. Um, we'll see. Uh, I've heard he wrestled other places, but I, I don't really know much. I do know that he lost to, to he, King Maxwell. He is entertaining. Didn't as he? Hell, man. Am I am I yeah. right? All right, yeah. he, he lost to King Maxwell, so... And that and that should show you just how good he is. Wait, that, that he, he lost could, to a two-year-old? Could, yes, that he could put on a match and put over a two-year-old. He, he's he's awesome. Okay, awesome. first but of all, really, listen, really funny. Facial expressions are amazing. That two-year-old. He's good stuff, man. That, that's, listen, putting over that two-year-old, I mean... Uh, let, let, let's be clear. That's like someone put Hogan, like I put Hogan over if I wrestle him. Like, the, you know, they're not putting him over. Like, that fucking two-year-old was way over. My, look, I brought my son to work yesterday. Thank you, Rockstar Spud. You know who the most over fucking person in the building was yesterday? My fucking yeah, son. Not you. Yeah. My, my son, 100%. The kids walked yeah. in today and were like, where is he? I'm like, that was a one-time yeah, deal, course. guys. What are you talking right, about? Nice. He's not a, yeah, like, I can't just bring him here every day. <laughs> like, this not ridiculous. my uh, mascot. That'd be awesome. But um, it was he was too sweet in people. It was uh, nice. it was crazy. They're like, "Yo, you really do teach him this stuff." He was uh, doing his, yeah, his. What do you think I was kidding? His Kalisto lucha 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 stuff. Uh, oh, it was pretty pretty. Ex- I was a little upset with my students though because he said tranquilo when they were getting a little loud, and no they didn't know what it, they didn't know who Naito was, and I was like, "I don't even I don't know if I know you people." No. But then again, I was probably in the same boat last year, so I'm not sure if I could. I'd be like, this Naito guy who keeps coming to Global Wars, I'm kind of sick of him. Yeah. I should do a comp. You know, if I had the uh, if I had the energy to, <coughs> yeah. to bury myself. There you go. There you go. If I had the energy that to bury be myself. One. Like, all, the, all the Ring of Honor guys that you crapped on or New Japan guys you crapped on that now are just some of your favorite people. Man, I, I really could... We, because I know that I say some absurd shit, uh, generally speaking, where you stay in the middle more often, and Correct. I know for a fact, without listening back, I, I, you know, the only thing is, is like, I think if I gave you the archive to go do it, I don't think you would, uh, I don't think you'd have the patience, but I probably no, have some and it would probably, like, I, half of, like, it would just be, like, everyone you ever were wrong about, and never anything you said that was right. And then, like, right after, it would just be me talking about and my love and uh, future prospects of Braun Strowman for, like, seven minutes. You really did. It really annoys me sometimes. All right. Okay. So, do we have any... We got NXT, Ring of Honor. We basically talked about Raw and SmackDown or avoided talking about them. For, I just I want to put it out there. This, we're uh, this we're hitting the hour mark almost, and we managed to talk about Raw and SmackDown very little. I'm pretty proud. Yeah, three things from the show total. This is very exciting. All right, so since we've got got all well, that, uh, just sit tight, guys, and uh, enjoy our interview with Sam Adonis. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Sam Adonis. Sam, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me, buddy. How are you? Uh, fantastic. So you're actually speaking us. To, to us before your show tonight, you know, it's been, you've had like some issues down there and I don't think uh, I'd be wrong in saying that you seem to be coming off as uh, El Matador de Leyendas and for our English speaking audience, basically a killer of legend. What's going on between you and uh, Negros Casas right now? Right now we have probably the hottest feud in Mexico, which is absolutely awesome because Negro Casas is a big star, not only in Mexico, but worldwide. So for me, it's pretty much a great opportunity, and I'm really happy to be a part of it. But, yeah, everything just seems to be going crazy right now. And I think we're heading towards a hair versus hair match. Do you have any idea uh, when we're looking? Like, uh, I know that usually there is an, an apuesta match, uh, either at the Christmas show or the New, uh, the New Year's Day show. I'm sure it'll be somewhere around that time. I'm not exactly sure what the date will be, but I think this coming Wednesday we have a press conference to decide what it's going to be. Will that be on CMLL Informa show? 
I'm not sure when it's going to be exactly, but I know uh, we're probably heading towards a contract signing. So the best thing to do would just be keep checking CMLL.com for more information. And so this all started really with the hair versus hair match that you had with Blue Panther. What was what was the reaction when you actually won the match and you're sitting there in the middle of Mexico City, uh, Reno, Mexico, and about to watch him get his hair cut? It was absolutely awesome because uh, Reno, Mexico was silent. And anybody that's ever been there knows it's not exactly a normal thing to happen. So people were pretty much in shock and they couldn't believe that I actually beat him. But from that point on, my career pretty much skyrocketed. Yeah, and part of that, you know, can be attributed to uh, the chance you took with coming out as, as a supporter of Trump with the American flag. I mean, playing a really classic heel. Would you say, I mean, I, from I wasn't there, but watching some old like Memphis stuff and uh, things like that, Jim Crockett promotions, it, it seems like you're getting the type of heat that these guys got in the 70s and, and early 80s. Well, that's kind of what I'm going for because I've always been a big fan and supporter of classic wrestling. I feel like uh, wrestling has gone in a different direction these days, and I really wish it would return to those roots. So, you know, the fact that people can make those comparisons is pretty much a big compliment for me because that's, you know, really what I was trying to do. And now you started training oh, in the United States, then you trained in England, and now you're in Mexico. How has the the clash of styles or how have you been able to kind of incorporate everything that you learned from these different regions into what you're doing right now? Well, I've really done what I could to make sure that I could be the best wrestler on the planet. You know, that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'd really like to learn every style and be able to, you know, bring something to the table that not everybody else has. So I've been able to uh, incorporate that classic 70s, 80s wrestling, you know, but at the same time mesh with international stars. Now in CMLL, you have this uh, issue with Negro Casas. You've had the issue with Blue Panther. Do you feel like this is going to be something that you see continuing with issues with specific, especially guys who are legends down there? I mean, is there any chance that the Ultima Guerrero is in your sights heading down the road? I would work, I would love to work with any of these guys, Ultima Guerrero, Atlantis. Um, the good thing is I'm such a strong force right now, and, and the heat is so strong that you know people really look to their legends, their heroes that are dependable. To, to vanquish the villain. So uh, I don't know where it's going or what's going to happen, but I know that I'm very confident with what I'm doing, and I think it can continue for a little while longer. What was it like when you first moved down to Mexico, uh, you know, being able to just be in a different environment and, you know, be surrounded or blanketed by a language that is not your, your first language? Well, I was lucky enough that I was able to learn it pretty quick. Um, I've adapted, and, uh, uh, you know, I've really took to Mexico, and Mexico's kind of taken to me as well. So um, I'm pretty happy everything's gone the way that it has. But it, it's all just part of, you know, sacrificing to become one of the best, you know, and doing whatever it takes to succeed in this expressive industry. What was it like for you during the, the recent earthquake? You know, it was obvious that you, you were down there, and uh, not just you, but all of CMLL was really trying to help the people and the fans of the product, but not just the fans, but the people in the city. What was it like for you to interact with fans that normally are booing you mercilessly and then here you're you're helping them out in, in really spectacular well, ways? I think a lot of the people realize the fact that I live in Mexico, that I respect the Mexican culture, you know, really do my best to fit in. But it was definitely a scary situation and everybody needs to come together because, you know, the city needs some support at that point in time. Is there, you know, with the partnership that CMLO has with Ring of Honor and New Japan, do you have any inclination to want to uh, appear for those companies as well? I would absolutely love to. It's just a matter of time and the opportunity. So um, I think if I continue doing what I'm doing, I'm sure the possibilities are endless. What was it like earlier this year when you did adopt the Trump supporter role, uh, getting so many people reaching out to you? I mean, you know, it was a really big deal. It was all over the news. It's definitely something that I think – people picked up on and wanted to know about? Uh, it was definitely a great opportunity because, you know, anytime you get that kind of coverage outside of wrestling, you know, it's clearly going to add to your reputation. So, you know, anytime I have those situations, I do what I can to embrace it and make it work. Do you, are you able to make appearances or speak to media in, in Mexico so that, you know, your brand is growing there as well? 
Oh, of course. Uh, CMLO has connections with all the major media ties. Um, it's a big major league operation, so um, I've been able to branch out. I've been in TV series. I've been on a, a lot of, you know, radio and whatnot. So the opportunity just continue to grow, and I couldn't be happier. Do you miss being in the States a little bit? Oh, yeah, but I still, you know, it's a misconception. People think that Mexico is, you know, so far away, but it's just like living on the West Coast, you know. A three hours late, and I'm back in Florida, so... Um, I've adapted, and I really enjoy the lifestyle here. Is there a difference wrestling, uh, you know, in uh, at a lucha event in the states as opposed to wrestling on, at a lucha event in Mexico? Well, here in Mexico, the people are a little bit crazier, which makes the atmosphere a little bit more fun. Everybody's always, you know, going absolutely crazy. So, uh, I wouldn't say it's too much different, but I would say the energy is a little bit stronger here in Mexico. Is there a certain person that that you work with in CMLL? that has been somebody that you worked with particularly well, that you clicked very well? There's so many guys here that are just some of the best in the world. Um, I can't say anyone in particular, but I'm happy always to work with Blue Panther, Negro Cassius, or Ultimo Guerrero, any of these guys, because they are on a different level. And what are some of the aspirations that you have, you know, moving forward this year and, and in the future? I just want to continue, you know, making my name stronger, and, you know, branching out to other markets and, continue to you know, stay somebody that people talk about and somebody know about in wrestling. Do you have any uh, fear going forward that you're, you keep putting up your hair in these Apuesta matches, it seems that at some point or another, everybody seems you eventually lose one or another. Well, um, it's bound to happen, I'm sure, but hopefully I can you know, keep the odds in my favor and keep collecting them before I lose mine. Maybe I can get out of town before I have the chance to lose mine. Have you ever had to really head out of the arena quickly after a match because of the heat you were getting? Um, I wouldn't say any quicker than usual, but uh, I always have my guard up and I make sure I don't make any silly mistakes. So, uh, you know, as long as you pay attention, it's usually not that big of a problem. One last question. How did you come up with El Rudo de las Chicas and, and, and that kind of, was that something that you always had an idea for going down there? Yeah, that was something I kind of thought of before. And most Rudos here are, you know, along the lines of demons and we're black, and it's just something different. I don't get more colorful and a, a bit more, uh, you know, not quite technical, but I just bring something different to the table. All right, excellent. How, how, where can people find you on social media? Uh, if you could check me out on Twitter at uh, Real Sam Adonis, that would probably be the best bet that I have on my matches, on my updates, and things like that. Well, thanks uh, very much for your time, and uh, very good luck in your match. Awesome, buddy. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Sam Adonis. I appreciate it. Uh, That match is going to be on January 1st, uh, live from Marina, Mexico, and you can catch that. Most likely on CMLL. Like you said channel. live from Miranda, Mexico. Oh no, Arena, Mexico, and it's going to be live on their YouTube channel. Uh, you can uh, follow them uh, on their YouTube channel. Uh, it's awesome. I'm, I I actually put it on the Apple TV, and I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's one of the reasons why I watch it so much because it's uh, it's great. It's free, and uh, he's you know he's wrestling Negro Casas in a hair versus hair match. Another Mexican legend and. Man, what exactly uh, does that translate to? Negro casas means uh, black houses. Thank you. Okay, that's you know that's what I ex- literally exactly what I thought, but I didn't know if like casas was spelt different, if it didn't mean houses. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, sometimes the names confuse me. Um, yep. like Starman. Uh, yeah. Or Star- uh, Starter who's Jr. Who's the drag queen? The drag queen. Yeah, like he was on Lucha Underground a couple of times. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't. He's got to be in CMLL. No, he's not in CMLL. You'd guy. be surprised. I, I don't know of a drag queen. I know of the awesome, um, the minis or the well, the, the midget wrestlers down there. I love them. Uh, just fantastic. Uh, Mihe and obviously everyone's uh, favorite. Kemonito, the blue little gorilla. Just uh, so much fun down there. So definitely check it out. And, uh, you know, he's, this might, this is, he said it himself. This is Sam Adonis' biggest match. And uh, I'm excited that I get to watch wrestling on New Year's Day. That's not WWE. All right. So anything else uh, to cover for this week? No, that's it. 
All right, so uh, just uh, make sure you guys take a minute to go over and uh, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. It's Christmas week. Give us a little present. Give us a review, you know? Help us out. We'd really appreciate it. Um, where you can, of course, tweet us over at Running Wild Podcast LWOS. Send us an email at runningwildpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow my pro wrestling, uh, my Ring of Honor coverage at pwponderings.com, rohworld.com, and last word on pro wrestling.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at rich underscore Laconi. You can go check out the podcast Arras de Lona, uh, which was my first Spanish debut on a, a debut on a Spanish podcast that I got to record uh, with my final battle thoughts. So, uh, guys, I was thank you to. Why don't you have your own podcast network? You have like eighty-seven of them. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. The RLW Rich uh yeah. Wrestling uh, Channel. RLPM. I'll, I'll start doing more, uh, but uh, it, it was uh, it was a fun time. I'm just super excited that I got to be. People can listen to my ridiculous, stupid takes in another language. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. All right. You're so be a big star in Mexico, bro. Oh, man, if I go down there in February to get off the plane, I'd, yo, and it's and I it's just, Rich Lacone. I just thought about that. Like, imagine you're like in the front row, and they like show you on TV like your Meltzer and shit. Uh, I'm gonna. I think I'm. I'm gonna rock some shirt when I sit front row in Mexico. I haven't decided what it is yet. A suit. Um, well, I normally do the suit, but I might. Maybe I'll promo. I'll, I'll please, get. A, please don't wear a suit in Mexico. No, let's get a Running Wild podcast shirt made before we get down to Mexico, and I can rock that. I thought uh, you were doing that like two years ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just you know, been a little behind. I got ten days, buddy. I got ten days. Nah, nah. <laughs> uh. All right, guys. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for all the new listeners because we've noticed our numbers going up lately. Really appreciate that. And uh, we'll they catch... jump from nine to thirteen. <sighs> Those are uh, thousands. Thank you. Thank you for. He likes to abbreviate, uh, so he just says when we're talking about our listeners, we're always talking about the thousands. <laughs> but with all that um, out of the way, just to remind uh, you, you guys, have been listening to the podcast that is just too sweet. Whee! For Rich and Runs, this is the host of Ring of Honor Wrestling, Ian Riccoboni, signing off. Be sure to join them next week for another episode of the Running Wild Podcast.